Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. Born male, became female. I say that every show just to make it clear, because people say, what direction are you going in? Eh. So anyway, my guest is the fabulous Ms. Sylvia Chapel. You've seen her before. Hopefully you'll see her for many, many years to come. She is the head of the chair of the New York City Edgar Casey Foundation, the ARE, the Association for Research and Enlightenment and Fabulous News. There is a new Edgar Casey Center. It opened very recently on 27th Street. It went from 30th Street to 27th Street. I believe it is 153 West yes. 57th Street, 77th. 27th, what yes. did I say? 153 West 27th. Yes, 153 right. West 27th, and it is on the 7th floor. How lucky is that? Yeah. And we're going to talk about the new Edgar Casey Center, and we're going to talk about the wonderful teachers and practitioners who are there. And there's a new course that people can take to become accredited psychics, maybe, if they have the talent, who knows? But, um, you know, uh, the new center, the Edgar Casey Center, I don't want you to confuse the Edgar Casey Center with the LGBTQ Center, which is on 13th Street. And if I say the center, I'd better make it clear I mean the Edgar Casey yes. Center. Because often on the show, when we talk about the center, we mean the LGBTQ Center, although I have it on good authority that some of the people who go to the Edgar Casey Center might be LGBTQ. All at once. You never know, right? <laughs> All these yes. lives going on simultaneously. We're very diverse. Yes. And if I show up, it's a Diane Arbus Bonanza. <laughs> but anyway. Yes. Um, we are going to talk about the wonderful new Edgar Casey Center. Let's talk about the wonderful new Edgar Casey Center. Okay. And thank you for having me on your show again. Oh, Diana. my pleasure. I always, have, always enjoy this. Well, good. I want to back up a little bit and say that there are probably a lot of people out there who know about Edgar Casey and know that there is the Edgar Casey Foundation and the organization is headquartered in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. And we've had an Edgar Casey Center in New York City um, in its most recent incarnation yes. since 1996. And we kind of think it's one of the best kept secrets about in the Edgar Casey world because many, many people have come to us and, and they say, I'm so happy to find out there's an Edgar Casey Center in the middle of New York City. I had no idea. Can you imagine? They have no idea. That's very sad. Well, we're doing more to get the word out, and uh, we also appreciate the op I appreciate the opportunity to you know talk to your audience. I too. love having everyone from the Edgar Casey Center on, and certainly you especially, but everyone. Fascinating guests, fascinating yeah. topics. Right in the metaphysical, and I know that's one of your interests. Mm, one, one of, of my main, main interests. interests yes. yes. And uh, yes, and you so you know a lot of our teachers. And, yes, and, and many of them, you've seen them, many of those and people we'll see here. many more, too, I hope. I hope. Yes. And, and let me just say that many trans people are into metaphysics because we certainly understand one life after another, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm yes. not joking. I mean, transformation. Exactly, yes. Exactly, yeah. So, um, so the new center, we say new center because um, we, we're in Chelsea. And those of you who know New York City, it's an extremely popular and very, very convenient neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we love the fact that we're able to be in the heart of New York City. So about a year and a half ago, we got from our landlord, our lease was running out, and we heard from our landlord the amount that he wanted <sighs> for the same space that we're in, uh, that we were in Which on is 30th Street. typical of New York City, actually. Yes, and, and we also, we checked around, we talked to real estate experts in our community, and they said he has every right to believe that Legally. he's going to get, that the market will bear. Well, so yes. we were looking at, if we stayed in our space and did nothing, a 70% increase in our rent. And we're, we don't have any... Uh, not yet any high-powered uh, endowments or or corporate funding or That's government a hint. funding. Or Should you anything. wish to make the Edgar Casey Foundation uh, part of your state planning, they're not for profit. Yes, exactly. We are not for profit. The Edgar Casey Center in New York. 
Um, so we started looking. We mm -hmm. stepped our, our perfect space committee, mm -hmm. and we had, uh, this is from using volunteers, all of those who serve on yes. the board are volunteers. And, and you chair the board? And I'm the chair of the board. Mm -hmm. And on our committee, Anton Barashi, who has been, yes, who's been here many times, and, yes. uh, did a lot of the legwork, and he has a background in construction. He mm -hmm. must have looked at about 50 or 60 spaces that were brought to us by very, very And I believe he was state. an architect in yes. before yes. his Edgar Casey Before he sojourned. became a bioenergy specialist. Uh, yes. Um, and so. This, the space that we found on, on 20, West 27th Street is the best, by far, the best of the spaces, mm -hmm. and it was accessible to us because a lot of landlords do not want to rent to uh, a nonprofit organization, especially one that doesn't, isn't, you know, doesn't have all the deep pockets, donors right. that, that some of them do. So we were very, very happy, very fortunate that we're able to stay in our location, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people said, well, why don't you move to Westchester? Why don't you move to Astoria? Why don't you move to Brooklyn? Well, I live in Brooklyn, but it's easier for me to get to Midtown Manhattan. Absolutely, and also, it's located near uh, Pennsylvania Station. Yes. So it's people coming close. from Long Island can go and there. Jersey. Exactly, and, and sure. Yes, we're very well, very well located. So we're very thrilled about that, and we, um, you know, it was a big investment. It was a huge decision for us. And we're very happy to say, and I'm going to show you your, our mm -hmm. September-October 2016 events calendar. And this is announcing our new home on West 27th Street. And the grand opening, which is September 24th, 25th. Which and was, we're filming this on September 16th. September, yes. So. Uh, but we have many, many, we have a whole calendar of events. That's just the beginning. And I am very, very proud of the caliber of people who were there offering their services. One of whom designed this, Nuya. What's her yes, full name? Nuya Fleuron is the designer for that in our web. Our she designed the brochure. Design. She's a well-known author. She wrote Callie's Choice. Callie's I Gift. Yeah. Callie's Gift. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's. you've seen her on the show. You can see her on YouTube. She designed this. Okay, and what we're particularly excited about is that um, as far as the ideal people to have to open a new Edgar Casey Center, we have them. And it's uh, Sydney and Nancy Kirkpatrick. Mm -hmm. They're a couple, they're co-researchers and co-authors of the definitive modern Edgar Casey biographies. Sydney Kirkpatrick, Amer and American Pro Edgar Casey and American Prophet. This is the definitive modern day. As biography. opposed to the Sleeping Prophet by Jess Stern. Or yes, something. back in the 60s. Which was our gateway drug, I believe. Yes, yes. that was it. That yes. was one of the first things I read about Edgar Me Casey. Too. Um, and then this is their, Sydney and Nancy co authored this and did What's it called? research. This is called um, True Tales from the Edgar Casey archives, and they are the only researchers to have been given unlimited access to the vault. And we mean the vault, because mm -hmm. that's where all the readings, the 14,000 plus readings, psychic readings that Edgar Casey did during his lifetime that were recorded. He is the most well-documented or the best documented psychic of all time, mm -hmm. and one of the greatest modern day psychics. Maybe the greatest. Maybe the greatest. We think so. Yeah. And so we were just we were thrilled that they were available to come and be the featured presenters at our grand opening. So And where can people buy these books? At in the bookstore at the Edgar Casey Center in New York. Yes, and if you become a member you got ten percent off. Yes. And there are also lots of other discounts to members on workshops. Um, so yes, we have a bookstore, and in the bookstore we also have a lot of the Edgar Casey remedies. And some of you might have grown up in Edgar Casey families, where if there's anything that was wrong, mm -hmm. your your mom or your grandma would slap, a, uh, you know, slap a ca uh, castor oil pack on it. I just washed the castor oil off myself from <laughs> last night. I'm serious. I use it. 
just about daily for yeah. something or other. Exactly, it makes a wonderful everything. Yes. Edgar Casey called it the called it the oil that heals. Yes, and 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 it's referred to one of the most frequently mentioned mm -hmm. in so many readings. And there is a database of the Edgar Casey remedies that yes. is has been put together from by researchers in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have many of the remedies, many of the tried and true ones, and mm -hmm. um, the classic ones. And we invite everyone to come and yes, yes. come and, and shop for that. We have we have New York clearly New York's largest selection of Edgar Casey remedies and books and bar products, B A R R yes, and B -A -A -R, all that. Yes. Right, and they're they're um, the ones who've done a lot of research into the readings in mm -hmm. order to formulate the products according to what the readings said. Um, they, and some of the products that were mentioned in Edgar Casey's readings are not available today. Yes. They were widely available back then, mm -hmm. but they're not available today. Edgar Casey lived between 1877 and 1945. Such as the black and white creams for the face and all that. Those yes. are not readily available yes. at CVS. So, yes. yes, and they have, and they've done a lot of research. But we are, <coughs> the, you can you can find many more of those and Edgar Casey books and and related books too. Mm -hmm on metaphysical subjects, mm -hmm. spiritual growth, psychic and intuitive development, mm -hmm. holistic healing. And those are the things that, um, you know, I'm so proud that we have a center here. And just given the fact that we're going, and, and those of us who are, um, who have been studying metaphysics, mm -hmm or just kind of aware of what's going what's going on and the trends. There are just so many more energies coming in to prepare us, I believe, for a leap in evolution. Wonderful. In human consciousness. And this is something that I was just doing some um, doing some Akashic Records readings mm -hmm. today. Which you do professionally. Yes, so. I do those. And the record keepers so frequent, frequently will say you are one who has agreed to come here at this time in order to assist. You're, they're often called or referred to as light workers, mm -hmm. those who are bringing more light into people's lives, into human consciousness. And I was very flattered and thrilled to hear the uh, record keepers say that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. That's very nice, and that I came here to be trans and do the whole trans thing. And be a pioneer, yes. and just let people know that what's important is, it's not you know what category or label is is stuck on you, mm -hmm. and just to develop who you are and mm -hmm. express who you are. Um, definitely. So, so now my sense is that Edgar Casey was so far ahead of his time in many ways. Mm -hmm. In some of the readings he gave for inventors, mm -hmm. uh, he did readings for. Um, for Edison, for Tesla, mm -hmm. and but in addition, in terms of consciousness, and I feel like now we're catching up to where he was back in the 30s, 20s, mm -hmm. 30s, 40s, and I say that because there's just so much, so many more people who are coming to our center or coming to me for readings or our practitioners um, and our teachers, just saying. I know I'm meant to be doing something else from what I'm doing. It's nothing sure. wrong with what they're doing. I was an advertising I writer, know, and a very know. successful one. And yes. I, I loved my work then. Uh, I was very, you know, very happy to be able to have that that lucrative niche mm -hmm. that I was in. Mm -hmm. uh, but now there's something so much more soul satisfying. Mm -hmm. I, I said, you know, I'm doing my soul's work, and I and I love it. I really love it. It's just touching lives and helping people in um, a very direct way, helping them to realize their full potential and to satisfy that yearning for the, you know, that many of, many of us bring in as our soul's purpose, mm -hmm. to be part of this evolution in consciousness, yes. to transform ourselves so that we, we release all those patterns where we have that knee-jerk response. Mm -hmm. And we're just responding from what happened in another life when we were afraid or there was something that traumatized us, mm -hmm. or in this life. And
and where we become aware that we have a choice. We have many more choices in how we respond to things. And then the other step of awareness is to realize that our choices and the consciousness that we hold and the vibration that we hold about our choices creates our reality. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard it. What's, what's in here is reflected. Mind is the builder, there. as Edgar Cayce used to say. Yes. Yeah. And it's the spirit is the life, mind is the builder, the physical is the result. It's mm -hmm. that hierarchy. And he also said that everything that exists in the material was first created in the, in the spiritual realm. Everything was a thought, realm. yes, it's before a th it yes. was matter. Yes. And he also talks about the importance of having the correct vibration, uh, what I call vibration, but he called it the ideal mm -hmm. for your thoughts. Mm -hmm and that your thoughts are what you create with, and you energize your thoughts with your emotions mm -hmm. about what you're creating. And if your emotions are uh, very loving and positive and generous and compassionate and kind, then, mm -hmm. well, guess what? Your result is more likely to be something that you're happy with. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he often stressed in the readings and his in his waking state too because he was a pretty enlightened yes he was fellow. Um, the importance of having your the highest ideal mm -hmm. that you could think of absolutely something that brings you closer to what you might define as god or the divine or unconditional love mm -hmm. so and he was a photographer before he was Edgar Casey registered trademark. Mm -hmm. Everyone's done something before. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, he was. It was interweave, interwoven. The doing readings. Yes. Because he needed money had to support yeah. his family. So. Yes. 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 And often they, he was not uh, money grubbing, and often they were quite poor. Yes, that's true. They had a lot of struggles. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And it's such a gift and a legacy to the world that all the all the so many of the readings were recorded by a stenographer. Gladys, Gladys what was Davis. Her name? Yes, Gladys Davis. Gladys yes, Turner yes. Davis. Um, and there were other scribes along the way, but when they found her, she was the one that. Well, he'd known her when he was Rob yeah. Ta and everything. Yes, yes, they were actually twin flames. Yes. And even and, though and he wasn't the wife, Gertrude was the wife. And they uh, had the character to resist having an affair. Exactly. Even yes. though they had been together many times, they said this time around. Yeah, they had a, they had a specific work to do, and they had to do it in with the highest integrity. Yeah. It doesn't mean they didn't slip, you know, like Edgar Casey might have had a day when he was angry or, sure. you know. He was human like anyone else. Yes. But they were also conscious of the fact that the papers, newspapers, were watching and actually sh they were accused of having an affair at one point. They said a shapely blonde stenographer and yowza, yowza. Yes. And something, yes. yes. Trying to just do uh, Yeah, just dirty, making it dirty, you know, yes. and they, that wasn't. Yes, and they knew that, and they were told in the readings, because they had readings about the readings, to know how they were supposed to proceed, uh, what they were supposed to do with this gift. And so part of the reason that we have this, this, this legacy is such a treasure is that, um, and this is something Sidney Kirkpatrick said when he was speaking last year at our anniversary, was that the readings say that he was he came in and those associated with him so that there could be the documentation mm -hmm. that whole body of evidence that just becomes impossible to deny and ignore and medical doctors and ever since he was alive medical doctors were conscious of his work and many believed in it he did work but today many more do you yes know? Yes, and I think that's part of the evolution of consciousness, yeah. don't you? Well, okay, 1970, far out, groovy. When I was into Edgar Casey, people would look at me like, been dropping acid again, right? <laughs> Today, I'm shocked. Politicians, everyone, the most sensible people, before they go to jail, are very much into <laughs> 
are very much into Edgar Casey, and I mean, you know, that's not why they go to jail. No, that's not why they go to jail. But I mean, just the most sensible, down-to-earth, bedrock people know who Edgar Casey is, respect his work, and believe in his work. So I mean, it's changed completely in 46 years. Yes, and and one of the things that Edgar Casey was. Um, that came through in the readings and in his waking state. He says, you don't have to believe this. This isn't a religion or a ism or a anything like he that. He actually said, do not Test found it. a religion around these yes. readings. Ta you know, try them out for yourself. Mm -hmm. See if it works for you. Do experiments. Just to treat this as a spiritual experiment as you would any other uh, scientific experiment. And just to make one thing clear, those of us who are into Edgar Cayce and into the Edgar Cayce Center and the Association for Research and Enlightenment, we are not a cult. This is not like many religions you may have heard of, populated by maybe a gay guru. film stars, yes, who <laughs> jump on couches and scream that they love a woman when we know what they really like. But anyway, this is not us. <laughs> you want to be gay here? Be gay. We don't care. Fine. Mm -hmm. Just don't frighten the horses. And, um, you know, I mean, this is not a religion. You can be a member of whatever religion yes. you are, or be an atheist. If you want to, just do the medical stuff. You don't need to believe in anything. Or if you want to develop your psychic <coughs> intuitive, excuse me, your, develop your psychic and intuitive abilities, and and that's something we're seeing more and more people coming to us who want to do that, especially young people. I mean, you guys are just sort of wired for yeah, for this really sort of are. work. And where Edgar Casey, I believe that where Edgar Casey was is where we're going, to where we all I have hope. these gifts yes. and we use them with hope, the hope is we use them to benefit and uplift consciousness yes. and everyone. And if uh, if it's not a dog-eat-dog -dog world, it's a much nicer world. And, you know, and the money system doesn't make a lot of sense in a non-dog-eat-dog -dog world because mm -hmm. competition isn't fierce. It's a whole other deal, yes. you know? Yes. And and generally, I would say in this, in our prices are on the or for more on the affordable yeah, side absolutely, for absolutely. our workshops and our training. Absolutely, um, and we also have a lot of free, what are called study groups or spiritual yes. growth groups that we offer on a weekly basis. And that are um, the there are right here just many uh, free workshops, and um, you know, I mean, you certainly don't have to be a plutocrat to go to the Edgar Casey Foundation. You really don't. The ARE. I mean, whatever you have is whatever you have, and they do mm -hmm. accept donations. But if you can't donate, for yeah. some, yes, for the with, for the weekly groups, the spiritual growth groups, those are a service that we provide yes. to the community. Yes, community, yes, yes. and there are other low low cost or other events um, that are accessible. And I'm sure if someone is truly destitute, truly destitute, there might be a way to sort of. Finesse a freebie entrance one or two. Yeah. You know. and we also we we depend a lot on volunteers. We have yes. a small a small staff, and and you started as a volunteer. I started as a, yes, indeed, and I still am. Yes, I mean, volunteer a lot there in, in yeah, various sure. capacities. Yeah. Well, you're volunteering now, doing a TV show, and I'm volunteering doing the TV show. We're volunteering as we speak, mm -hmm. and yeah. right off camera is Mr. Kev O'Kane who does great past life regressions and teaches classes there. Yes. And he's sitting right there in the flesh. We're not channeling. <laughs> and he says hi. Yes, I, I was going to mention that uh, the teachers there, there's Kev O'Kane, who is my past life regression teacher. Yes, and, and he's brilliant. He's absolutely, he people are awed by his talent. If you want a past life regression, Kev O'Kane is certainly someone to consult. Yes, and one of the, one of the dreams that I have is that we become a center where we have the ability for people like Kev O'Kane mm -hmm. to teach on, a, yes, on yes, an ongoing yes. basis and do research. And Maureen, uh, Maureen St. Germain, yes, Akashic Records whom you've reading, seen on the show. Who is my teacher for Akashic, Akashic Records yes. readings. And she also And writes wonderful books, which yes. are really great. And mm. about manifestation. Yes, yes, yeah. and the fifth dimension and all sorts of things. Right. Not the sixties group, a different yes. fifth dimension. Right. Yes. The fifth dimension that we up, up and we're away. heading to. And yes. it is up up and away, but but it's also right here. And if we want to bring that into the third dimension, it's a much happier place to be. 
Yes, hardly enough I understand that there are lower dimensions than this, which yeah. is too terrifying to even <laughs> contemplate. Well, so turn your sights to, oh, to all the higher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or as Edgar Cayce he said, turn, turn your face to the light and the shadows fall far, far behind. It's one of my favorite quotes. It's just reminding yes. me of what to focus of my awareness on. So we have Maureen who's offering um, certifications um, as a teacher. We have Karen Francis mm -hmm. who is who's teaching uh, from psychic Ireland, and yes. who is an internationally respected psychic um, she went to Arthur Findlay. Teacher of yes. medium and uh, medium and spiritual healer. And she's a former Iraq War correspondent. Yes, and so she's offering a lot of courses here in uh, developing, and and we also say that they're different. They're different modalities, and I happen to teach tarot, and mm -hmm. that's one way that I've expressed my psychic, intuitive, or you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. developed my psychic and intuitive yes, yes. abilities. And anyway, how can people um, contact uh, the ARE? They can contact the ARE by going to, um, by going to our website, which is edgarcaseynyc.org. Let me spell that too. E-D-G-A-R-C-A-Y-C-E-N-Y-C dot O-R-G. And the phone number is 212-691- Seven six nine zero, mm -hmm. and um, I strongly urge you to investigate the Edgar Casey Foundation and Edgar Casey himself. You can Google him. You can find out. He's known as the father of holistic medicine. My guest has been the fabulous Miss Sylvia Chapel, who is the chair of the ARE Association for Research and Enlightenment here in New York, and uh, you may contact. The Edgar Casey Foundation by going to edgarcaseynyc.org. Okay, and I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. Hey, even if no one lo else loves you, I love you, and I'm sure Edgar Casey loves you, and a lot of people love you. And you, maybe you don't know how many people love you. How do you know? You know, someone from the Edgar Casey Foundation came here once and said that a friend of mine who died when he was 25 many years ago really liked me, and I had no clue, you know? <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, I digress. I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. I love you a lot. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. I have no taste. No. <laughs> I love you a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye. And we're waiting for the show. Yes. Bye. You both were wonderful. You were great. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Speaking so extemporaneously, wow. Well, yeah. it was easy to talk to you. It was easy well, to talk to you. Well, they, they want us to do well. Yeah, yeah, you know, they they're do. on our side. They do. And thanks for the prompt. Do you know, for some wacky reason, I was looking at that timer. Oh, no, it's up there. And I never looked up there. I did that, too, the first few times. And I thought, yeah, why is that there? It saying 20 minutes. I, I know. It's I, perpetually 20 minutes. I, I, what does that mean? I, I've seen that myself, and I wonder, ah. the first few times I did that, too. I'm going to take a quickie break so I can... Cultivate lung cancer or something. <laughs> and I will All right. If you, yeah, if you want to walk around. And, you know. Yeah, I might even check in with the record keepers and see what they have to say. So, there, if you don't so mind, you made I'm going to be off. Okay. I'm exhausted. I bet you are. God, uh, I everything you're doing. Yeah. And I'm glad you explained to Maria that it was oh, yes. better to just. Let it go. She couldn't. Weekend. She couldn't understand. It's like her mind was just not working. She at was the time. just in that yeah. on that treadmill. That's right. Got to get it open. Got to get it but open. She, gotta get but she understood. Good. She understood. Good. Like it's not a failure or anything. It's That's not right. a personal. And so tomorrow we're going to uh, look at the con the conception or the concept.